Hey everyone, I'm glad you're here. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can work with virtualization on the M1 Mac computers. In this case, I have an M1 Mac Mini that I'm going to use, but this could be one of the new iMacs or one of the new MacBooks as well. The key is what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the resources of this computer and we're going to take some of those resources and use them to run a second and even a third operating system at the same time all on one piece of hardware. It's as if we had a computer and we wanted to run another computer inside of that computer and we could even run another computer inside that computer. So I could be running my Mac operating system, I could be running Windows 11, and I could be running a Linux operating system all on the same piece of hardware. Now that might seem a little bit complex, but don't worry, follow along with this video and it'll all make sense. So the tool that I'm going to use in order to create a virtual machine on an M1 Mac is called Parallels. You can download it and then you can install it. It does cost about $130 Canadian, about $100 US. And if I open up Parallels Desktop, it's going to give me the option of, immediately going to give me the option of installing Windows 11. I'm going to skip this because you can actually install different operating systems on here. You can install an Ubuntu Linux server, uh, you can install Fedora Linux, you can install Debian, uh, you can install Kali, you can even install a Mac OS X that you can then use for development purposes. If you have an operating system that's not listed here, you can even go in and drag an ISO in here. So if you download the operating system as a disk image, you could bring that in. So if you have a different version of Linux that you want to use, or if you have um, an other type of operating system, you can do that. I will go ahead and grab Windows 11 from Microsoft, and I will make that the operating system that we'll install in this demo. When I install Windows, it's going to go in and it's going to start downloading Windows, which can take a little bit of time in order to do. Once Windows 11 has downloaded, it will validate the installation and begin the process of installing. So you'll have to give some permissions to the different aspects, for example, uh, the camera. Now in my case, I actually don't have a camera because I'm using an M1 Mac Mini, but I'll say OK anyways, and I'll access the microphone. Again, I don't have a microphone installed, but when I do install those devices, it will allow them to have access. Now you can see here, I can also install something called the Parallels Toolbox, which I highly recommend. You can do things like record your screen, you can make uh, uh, GIFs, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and install that at the same time. Now normally that would be a separate purchase, but I think pretty much anytime you buy Parallels, they give you the toolbox for free. It's sort of included as a value add, so you can always check into that. So now it's going to have a license agreement, so I'll go ahead and agree to the license agreement. It'll install the toolbox here. And now that installation is complete. I'll say done. And now you can see the installation of Windows is occurring. It's a pretty small window that I have here, so I can increase the size and it'll fill the entire screen once it's done. But you can see that it's now grabbing all of the files that it downloaded and beginning the process of installing Windows. The process does go quite quickly because it is a fairly powerful machine and you'll see that it's going to automatically restart. I could also hit the restart now button and start it right away, but it only takes a few seconds. It's going to restart and now it's going to go through the installation process as if this was a Windows machine. It's going to ask me to put in a user account, my Microsoft account, for example, and I'll be able to start using Windows on this Mac. So the Windows installation process begins with the welcome screen. It's going to get everything ready for me. And it is going to ask me to sign into this machine just as if I was assigning into a, a brand new Windows machine. It's going to want my Microsoft account. That's going to be the main thing that it wants. And then it will actually configure this system to act as if it was one of my machines that I was running elsewhere. So it's going to act just like a laptop, just like a desktop. It's just going to be another machine that Microsoft sees as being part of my collection of Windows 11 machines. 
And here we have a complete installation of Windows. Now, in my case, I did, uh, I sped up this video a little bit by some of the times that I was waiting. I edited that down. So you do have to have some patience while it says getting things ready and don't panic if there's a, a blank screen for just a few moments. It is working in the background. When I go to continue, you'll notice I get a little bit of a, a nicer uh, screen here. I can download a Windows update. So there is actually an update for Windows here. So I can begin the process of downloading it. And now I have Windows here on my Mac. And one of the things I can do is extend out the size so I can change the size of the window of this uh, size of the window window and this gives me a little bit more working space I'll just go ahead and minimize this I can go in and start installing Microsoft Office apps and now I have this Windows 11 experience I can start working with Windows applications there's a lot of really interesting things you can do you'll notice in my case that it also logged in with my Windows account because it automatically logged in with my Windows account out. It actually put some desktop icons from my Surface actually onto this particular Windows machine. And if I was to go in here and create, for example, a new folder, and I'll just call it a demo folder. If I create that demo folder, notice that I have the demo folder here. And on my Mac, I have the demo folder here. And if I do something like go into that demo folder, and I'll just right click and create a new and we'll just create a new text document. We'll use the classic hello world. So I'll create a new document in here. And then if I go to the demo folder on my Mac, you'll notice that on my Mac, I have hello world as well. So it synchronizes the desktop from the Windows 11 machine in parallels to the desktop in my machine over on my Mac. So an interesting thing that I can do is if I go to my Mac here, right click and import from phone, I'm gonna take a photo from my phone. It's going to connect up to my phone, my camera here. I'm going to take a picture of this little Dynaflex uh, device I have for building power, for preventing carpal tunnel syndrome. So I've gone here. I'm going to use that photo. When I use that photo, this photo is now here. So everything is synchronized desktop to desktop. That's a really nice feature of Parallels that I really like. It's something that's super handy because a lot of times what I might do is I might want to have some images that I capture in Windows. And then what I want to do is I want to do some sort of manipulation using Mac programs. That's very common. So where you have something where you have good imaging editing software on your Mac, but you have things that you want to take pictures of windows and that sort of thing it's, it's quite handy. So there you go. That's how easy it is to install a windows 11 machine into parallels. Now with parallels, you can also go in and you can work with different devices you have. So you can go in and work, for example, connect up to a USB device and have it either connect to the Mac or Windows. Uh, you can go into the file here. You can look at some of the things, for example, free up space, work with the anything with Windows, uh, with the Windows machine here. If I go into the Parallels program, the Parallels desktop program, I can go in here and I can go and I can go to my control center and underneath my control center here, I can even add multiple other operating systems. So I could go plus and I could install on here, say continue, and I could install Ubuntu Linux. So I could have multiple machines all running on this M1 Mac. I'm not going to go through the Ubuntu installation, but I could have multiple machines on my Mac as long as I have enough memory, disk space, and, uh, and processor to handle it all. So definitely I could have a Windows 11 machine running just a few gigs, and then I could have a Ubuntu machine run, a desktop running a couple gigs. My Mac M1 has 16 gigs, so maybe I do four gigs for the Windows machine, two gigs for the Linux machine, that's six gigs, still leaves 10 gigs for the Mac, and run them all at the very same time. I hope that was helpful and I hope you now have a new way where you can run Windows or Linux or another Mac on your Mac and have the ability to switch between operating systems and use whatever programs you might need no matter what operating system they were designed for.